Hey fam, I just want to preface this last uh, section of this series with this video. I think that is very that adds another layer of understanding. Uh, it is from the great prophet Isaiah, who I think is probably my favorite prophet of all of the Old Testament. I mean, this brother he he only has just a beautiful way of writing. You know, his flair and the languages and and the way he you know just the, just the, his the way he writes, but also because it's such a large book, I believe the largest book of all of the prophetic books of the Old Testament, it is so, it covers so much, not, not just the prophecy about the, uh, who Christ is and his coming and his purpose that he fulfills, but it also covers a whole lot about our people and the condition that we're in. And uh, one particular verse, uh, that does that to me in a in, in, in kind of in a summation way. He starts right out in the beginning of his book, and it is the first chapter, the third verse. Allow me to read this um, as a, uh, a a starter or an introduction into this last part of the video series. The ox knoweth. This is Isaiah one three. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. What he's saying in this, in this verse is that, and this is my understanding, that the ox is supposed to be a dumb animal. Pretty dumb. So in a way, he's kind of like, <laughs> based on where he's going, it's almost an insult, but we won't take it as such. <laughs> he says the ox knows his owner. He knows the he knows the person who takes care of him, who meets his needs. Uh, he 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 he's not confused about that. No matter who comes on the farm, he knows who his owner is. He knows the person that uh, um that that feeds him, the person that uh does, you know just allows him to exist, and uh that shows that that particular part of him is very intelligent. <laughs> but then the next line says, and the ass, his master's crib. So they say that you can take a donkey like 30 miles or so away from home, his home, and he'll make his way back. <laughs> that, that says a lot. So this supposed to be a dumb creature too, I think, based on information I've got. So as far away as you can take him from his home, he will make his way back. That is just the ability, the intellectual ability of a donkey, an ass. <laughs> so that makes the next couple of next couple of phrases very interesting. It's about us, of course. But Israel does not know. Does not, does not know what? Doesn't know his owner. Doesn't know her owner, rather. And doesn't know her master's crib. So we don't know really the God that takes care of us because we have been so removed from our people and from our culture and from our heritage that we don't even know who really takes care of us. We think we know, but we don't really know. And that's very interesting how Isaiah opened opened up like this. This is like the, this is like the first three third verse in, in his uh, whole sixty some plus chapters. And then it says, but my, this is the sad part, really. But my people, meaning Israel, does not consider. That means that not only do we not know whose we are, we don't know where we're from when it, you know, the master's crib. We don't know who we are. And then we don't even consider who we are. We don't even think about where we're from. You know, we say that we, you know, we, we say we're from Africa, which we know we were taken from Africa, but we don't even want to know as much as what tribe we're from, what particular country we're from, what our heritage, our, our culture, our language, our families from which we came. We don't even consider that. We don't even consider the fact that we're the only people on the planet who don't know who we are. 
who don't know where we came from, who cannot, um, who cannot articulate our true heritage. The, her- the only culture and heritage that we know is right here in this country. And then, the, and then we are so in, in, entrenched and assimilated into this country that we love it. It's like, it's, you know, I can say it all the time, we have Stockholm Syndrome. We love our kidnappers. <laughs> we love our oppressors. We don't even consider that there is, uh, especially in this age, a way to find out who we are and where we're truly from. And that's very sad. Because other people groups, they know who they are. They know where they're from. They know their heritage, their culture, their language, their families, their family crest over there in Ireland, things like that. We don't know any of those things and we don't even consider. So I say to you as we go into this last section, it's time to consider. It's time to, it's time to know who we are. It is time to learn our identity, people. It is time to know our identity. All right, now we're taking a we're taking a turn here. We're going into the DNA for those of you who got to have your science. You got your science. And there's this thing called a haplogroup. A haplogroup is a genetic population group of people who share the same co- common ancestry. And uh, so it's kind of like your. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what's a good word. Uh, it's, your, it's like your stock, okay? So people that share a genetic stock, you know, where you come from. Okay? So, so let's talk about that, what the half of group is. Uh, that our Dr. Yeshua, Yeshua Ben Ephraim, he is responsible for this discovery of the half of group E1B1A. And this half of group is found predominantly among Bantu, which is a Negro, Descendants to include, but not limited to, African Limba, many West African tribes, Igbo Jews, Yoruba Jews, African Americans, West Indians, Brazilians, Haitians, and other Negro influenced races throughout the Caribbean and scattered across all different nations. Contrary to false DNA reporting, this is not a sub Saharan or Hamitic haplogroup. Mm-mm. It is Semitic. In origin, Negroes have been identified as being exempt from the bloodline of Ham, by, you know, by where even the Zondervan Compact Dictionary has exempt us. It's proof right that, and that dictionary was written by Jewish men. This haplogroup represents the Y DNA of Jacob, the father of the twelve tribes, and this, of course, this research, as I said, is, uh, came about. Uh, Dr. Yoshua, Yoshua in Asia. Yeah, very good. Thankful to him. And as you can see in the map, uh, the E1B1A, that is for those of us that consider ourselves uh, that are from the, the West African uh, part of the continent, where uh, you, you have Ghana, you have Nigeria, you have the mean, that, that little area, that's where we were extracted from the that part of Africa, uh, especially initially, and, and scattered to the four corners. Okay, the, that map kind of explains that. Uh, now, our President Obama, I think I mentioned earlier, he his haplogroup group is E1B1B. Okay, he is not Semitic, so he is actually he actually is more of an African American than we are because. He is African. His father is Kenyan, which is from, he's, he's Hamitic. He's from the seed of Ham. He's not from the seed of Shem like the rest of us. So that explains the thing. So. But nevertheless, uh, so that means that his father being from Kenya, he's, he's, he, you know, he, is, he is truly African American for that reason. So I'm just trying to just, I don't want to get off on a tangent with that because uh, that's, that's another, that's another conversation <laughs> we'll have in the future. But this, uh, this is just some scientific proof. Uh, there's, there's so many, I mean, you can get your DNA tested and it's going to take you right to that area. So and then you're going to see some in Spain because the, uh, when, during the, the um, Spanish Inquisition, we were take, we were uh, exiled to West Africa. 
uh, where we, less than 10 years later, after the Spanish Inquisition, we were uh, taught, we were caught, we were brought and scattered uh, to other nations by way of ship, that mass verse in Deuteronomy 28. So uh, that's one proof. This brother here, Richard Henry, he also proved the pattern of the Papa group. B1B1A uh, is the real Israelite lineage. I'm telling you, y'all, they have all this DNA proof. They have it. In, they have tested the skulls of, of Hebrew slaves in Egypt, and they have the same DNA as our skulls here in America. I mean, I, I, I don't really know what to tell you. So I'm just, uh, I, I, I can expand more, but I know that this video is getting long, and I'm trying not to keep it too long. But then there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's another component that we want to get into. Uh, if you're not satisfied with that, then you just tell me and I'll try to, I, I do have more proof. I'm just trying to be mindful of the time. And that's kind of what my, that's my, kind of my top take is that I really would like to get into the history now. Let's go to history. Now in the last video, I showed y'all a book that I had. And, um, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to show you this time, but it's called um, Antiquity of the Jews by a, one of the most credible historians of all time because he was present during the siege of Jerusalem uh, when Rome came and destroyed the temple. And his name is Flavius Josephus, and he was a Jew. And if you look at the book, he's depicted as a white man on the cover, but he is not a white man. Y'all know that's all part of the propaganda and iconoclasm, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, this is an excerpt. This this right here uh, is an excerpt from his book. It's, um, I'm just going to read it. It says, um, words from uh, ancient historians and scholars that prove black people are the biblical Israelites. Migration from Israel to West Africa in 70 AD, the Romans invaded Israel, causing millions of Israelites to escape to Africa. In his book, The Great Roman Jewish War, 66 through, six, uh, through 70, these are the pages, the Roman historian Flavius Josephus stated over thousands of years ago that the Israelites migrated into Africa. He writes, General Vespasian and his son Caesar Titus fought against the Jews. Millions of Jews fled into Africa, among other places, fleeing the Roman persecution and starving, um, starvation during the siege. I told you they starved them out, and that's why people were starting to eat their own babies. Yeah, it was rough. That was a horrible time, but it was also prophetic. Christ told them that when you see, uh, you know, when you see uh, Jerusalem trodden down, it is that's when you flee to the mountains. I mean, prophetically, uh, even Christ got in on this with history. He told him what was going to happen because he was Christ. He knew what was going to happen. He knows when he's going to come back. He knows everything. You know, he, he created everything that we see. He was the creator of all this. So, um, the, you know, the, 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 histor the historical migration is backed up by the DNA evidence that says black people of Africa, of the African diaspora, and trace their ancestry back to Israel. I mean, there's such a plethora when it comes to that. Y'all wouldn't believe the information that I've learned that I have uh, in my new library <laughs> that uh, these books that I have bought um, listening to my uh, these modern day prophets and listening to the books for, or ordering and reading the books that they recommended. So we have just, I like to start first with the Zondervan. Compact Bible Dictionary. It's called a Compact Bible Dictionary because it's small, but it really is just a, a, it's a condensed version of a the original, which is big. And uh, so you have uh, the def if you pull up the definition of Ham, remember in Christianity we were taught that we were descendants of Ham. And we were okay with that because Hamites were dark people. And that just made sense. But it was all a lie and it was a deliberate lie. This on purpose because they're trying to get us away from our birthright, and they know that if they can scare us away from that truth, then we there's nothing in us that will rise up and say, Hey, look, you can't treat us any kind of way, you can't do this any kind of way, you can't uh, abuse us, exploit us, you can't do this. But we know and we're from the royal house of Israel, and we know what the promises of Abraham are, that we know what belongs, to and um. You know, they didn't want any more revolts than they had back in slavery. But you're never going to be able to keep the people down when you mistreat them and they're not, they don't have the ability to, to just make 
decisions on their own and be able to just uh, prosper on their own and take care of their own families and have their own culture, have their own ability to meet their own needs. If you do that, just like having a foot on, on, on their neck, and that keeps you in bondage too, because you got to keep your foot there in order for them to stay down. Right? Let's take a look at this definition of hand to prove to you that they know who we were all the time. Now remember, the word Negro is Spanish for black. And just like Moors means black. And uh, I just want to make the point that that word, we were, we were called Negroes starting when we were in Spain. Because after we, well, I'm, I'm not going to get into Bible history, right? but there was a time when we ruled, we were the culture of Spain. Then Christianity came. And took over and conquered us, and, and, and that's when the Spanish Inquisition happened. But that's where the Negro, uh, us being called Negroes, began. So, the people that wrote this dictionary they define the word ham as the following The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight people to live through the flood. He meaning Ham, became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. Hmm, what does that mean? That means that there is a dark race of people called Negroes that are not from Ham. But the Egyptians, so the, now they're telling me who are from Ham. These are the four nations that that uh, that came from him: the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Libyans, and the Canaanites. Let's just, let me give you the reference there. We want to keep up. We want to just say focus on the words, not the Negroes. So that means that the people who are called Negroes are not Hamites. Now it doesn't say that it doesn't say that the Shem. But it certainly says that we're not ham. So that is proof in the pudding. And this book has been around for several decades. This is not a this is this is a book that was considered very credible as far as Bible dictionaries. A lot of people who study the Bible, they have the Azambadan Bible dictionary. And um I just want to make sure that it's plain. We can definitely say without a shadow of a doubt, and with other kind of historical documentation, you'll see. That we are not Hamitic. We are Shemitic. Want more history? Well, one of the advantages of being able to, when you rule the world, you're able to control history. You're able to control uh, what goes out to the world. And uh, the Bible says that Esau would think to change laws and time. And another thing he could control was things like books uh, and what was inside of books, and even maps. So let's take a look at this 1747 map. Very interesting map. It is what we call the Negro Land map. And if you notice, uh, on the west, west coast of Africa, there is this uh, section called Negro Land. Now, why would they call it Negro Land? Because all of the people that were, uh, the, all of the dark races that dwelled in Africa were not considered Negro. What were the descendants of Ham? You had Canaanites, you had Ethiopians, you had Egyptians, and you had Libyans. And of course they fractured into more and more different tribes. So for them to call a section of Africa Negro land, that means that there was a different kind of people. Because over there you had your Timbuktu, over there you had your your sub-Saharan kind of area, um, and it was, a, 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 of course, during the Spanish Inquisition, the Jews that were exiled, those that would not conform and, and, and be forced to, to take on the, the religion called Christianity, they were exiled to St. Thomas as well as the, yes, western part of or what we call West Africa. So that is a, a, a that is an indication right there. If you look at the part that I have amplified, you'll see the Gold Coast, and right next to the Gold Coast is the Slave Coast. 
and you will see the you will see the words kingdom of judah kingdom of judah or wida which is portuguese for judah and right underneath there it says slave coast that is where the majority of our people early on in the in the the, the slave trade were extracted from so this map right here is a is an indication unto itself that the way the zondervan dictionary defines uh defines ham or africans are different than who are considered to be the negroes the negroes were those that were in spain and those that had migrated from yes northeast africa also known as israel after the the siege on jerusalem in 70 a.d so here's a, just another proof uh, that and something that I, identifies us in particular, and that is the Negro land map of 1747. All right, here, this is what I call my Kumbaya slide. <laughs> and it's, it, it, here are records of names of the Israelites who were sold into slavery in the Americas. Notice how most of these particular slave records show in shown and in Yah. Yah is Hebrew for God. This confirms that Stephen Chronicles 714. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, who are called by my name. So we have names like Daniel, that the L part means God. Yah, of course, is, is short for uh, higher. And uh, these are, these, this is the slave database that had the names of many of the slaves once they came over from Africa or over from Spain, but mostly I'm talking and speaking of Africa. And you see that all, a, lot, a lot of these things end in, in Yah, proving that this, uh, proving once again that we are the Israelites. And, and, and because the, the, the group, the, the group of slaves that came over first, they were closer to the truth, of course, than we are today. They knew that after a couple, couple of generations, it was going to be harder for us to connect with our people because we were not just removed from our land, but then we were broken. Our families were broken when we got here. We were uh, broken by way of being beaten. There were um, there were uh, sex farms where people were uh, sold and 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 had sex with each other. Uh, you know, that's where the word MF comes from. If you didn't know that, but. Um, Sons would have sex with their fathers because they were forced to, and the people would come from afar to these self farms. So that they, uh, these men of other nations would come and have sex with our men, uh, sodomize our men, and, and our women as well, and our boys. And, and, and they, these were straight up sex farms. That's all they were before. And so we know that these people knew that when they when Christianity was forced upon them, forced upon them. It was never a part of uh, the, uh, the early church of like Paul and Peter and, you know, that Christianity did not even exist. Not until hundreds of later, after those apostles were all died, they all died out. That is what that verse that says, uh, wood and stone, that you will serve other gods. See, this, that's not the same God, y'all. Christianity, the God of Christianity is not the same. And I digress. Let me get back on that. So, that song Kumbaya, that is a you know there were so many indications. Even when we were in the when we were coming up with songs, we go down Moses way down in is in Egypt land. We were singing songs about uh, Israelite experiences, not about not about the Congo or 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 African lands and or anything like that. We were we were singing songs that that reflected our true heritage. And it wasn't by design. It wasn't because we were re reading the Bible for ourselves. You know, we weren't allowed to read the Bible. Then those of us who 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 snuck and read or accidentally learned, you know, they they they, they, they had some moments of enlightenment. Like Matt Turner, he knew he was an Israelite. That's why he that's what he was like, okay, I'm gonna kill some folks. Y'all with me? Um he knew that he was uh, he was supposed to be free. He knew that he was an Israelite. 
God. It's just a, it's just, it's just proof, and I got all other all kinds of other proof of slave slave database with names that are Hebrew. All right, this particular collage or this particular slide explains that there are uh, not just our historians, but there are also historians historians of the people who call themselves Jewish, who are declaring that they are not the true Jews. They have no biological DNA uh, connection to the original Israelites. Now, you can find some of this proof in Dr. Rudolph Windsor's book, which is one of the books that I recommend a lot, called From Babylon to Timbuktu. This book talks, gives us a, an account uh, through his research of the Great Migration from, uh, from Jerusalem from 70 AD and how we uh, went into, uh, you know, it, it just explains how we ended up in West Africa where we were eventually extracted. So hear me, this is an ex explanation of how we got from, yes, Israel, which is called Northeast Africa. It's, on, it's always been a part of Africa until just a, a few, uh, a couple hundred years ago when they built the, uh, the Suez Canal and cut it off from cut you know built this waterway to cut off Egypt from north from Israel. You used to you used to walk from Israel straight over into into Egypt. That's how Abraham did, and all of all of our forefathers when there was some kind of famine or some kind of reason for us to escape Israel, we could walk right on over. But now. There is a waterway called the Suez Canal to cut it off. And that is for the sole purpose of trying to disconnect us so that people, when they think in terms of Israel, they're not thinking anything that resembles Africa. But there's proof that the same, there are, same, there are um, species, same species of animals that are in Israel are, is, are species of animals that are in Africa. There's all kind of proof. We don't even need it. If you look at the Titanic, the type the Titan, the Titanic, what do you call it? the uh, the 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 plate underneath that ground, even with the Suez Canal running through it, <laughs> Te tectonic. That's it, tectonic plate. It connects that landmass to Africa. Like I said, it wasn't until a few years ago when it was called it was called Northeast Africa, and they changed it to the Middle East. Y'all, I'm telling you, it's all kind of conspiracies. That 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 uh, and things that have been done to keep uh to keep us in the delusion to keep us uh under this lie to keep to keep us from knowing who we are. So here you have also two Jewish uh, historians. Uh, one is named Shmolo Sam. Uh, he argues in his book that it is likely that the ancestry of most contemporary Jews, that means Jews of the day, stem mainly from outside the land of Israel, and that a nation uh, race of Jews with a common origin never existed, and that just as most Christians and Muslims are, are the progeny of converted people, not of the first Christian and Muslims. Jews are also descendants from converts, according to saying. Judaism was originally, like its two cousins, a proselytizing religion, and mass conversions to Judaism occurred during the Khazars and the Caucasus, Berber tribes in North Africa, and in the Hemorite Hem, kingdom of the Arabian Peninsula. Then there is author Kessler. He wrote the book called The Thirteenth Tribe. Now, you know there are only 12 tribes. Why would he call his book the 13th tribe? Because he knows that there was a tribe that's not, that is not uh, connected at all to the original 12 tribes. And his book, his book uh, is a 1976 book in which uh, he advances that the thesis that Ashkenazi Jews are not the descendants from the historical Israelites of antiquity, but from Khazars, a Turkish people. And he, he, he hypothesized that the Khazars, uh, who may have converted in Judaism in the 8th century, which is true, migrated westward in Eastern Europe in the 12th and 13th century, when the Khazar Empire was collapsing. So 
even their own people are, gi are giving us historical accounts. And I can just give you instance after instance of other books that I have uh, that explain and prove that they have no biological connection whatsoever to any of the, the uh, 12 tribes of antiquity or of the Bible. There's your historical proof. I got more. I love this slide because um, this Egyptian president, Gamal Nasser, he is, of course, he's been dead and gone for a long, long time, but he uh, he made this very strong statement when uh, Israel uh, was being invaded by the impersonators. And I'll just keep you with that. And he said, uh, when he was asked about peace in the Middle East, the late president of Egypt, Gamal Abder, Abdel Nasser stated, the Jews will never be able to live here in peace. Why? <laughs> because they left here black, but they came back white. So he was making the point. I mean, this is a this is a true statement. You can look it up. He was on, I think, Time magazine, some major magazine like that. And this was a quote of his. Probably can't find it now, but we, we get the proof. So um we know that the original blues uh, of the Jews, based on the pictures from the dark, uh, the depictions of us from the dark ages, uh, we have all kind of historical data through that. So I hope that we, we're making our case here. You are Israel, whether you like it or not. You need to embrace who you are because your identity in Christ is is, is your identity as an Israel. They're they're one and the same because. Through, the, through Christ's sacrifice, he's making it available to have grace so that we can inherit what was ours, and that is the promises of Abraham. And part of the promise is that we would be above only and not believe, and not believe we would rule over all other nations. And that's what we're going to see happen in the kingdom to come. So you've got to see that there is the significance of knowing who you are, the significance of identifying as an Israelite, not as a Christian because God, Christ is not coming back for Christians. He's not coming to avenge Christians. He's coming to avenge his people. And if you don't embrace the truth of who you are, you're going to miss that boat. You're going to be destroyed right here in Babylon. You're going to miss that second rap that you're going to miss that rapture. You're going to, you're going to miss the kingdom. That's how significant this is because once you find out who you are, then you got to do what it takes to get back on code with God. You got to do what it takes to get back in covenant with God to be able to claim your birthright. And you can't do that calling yourself a Christian. Because Christianity was uh, invented by a man named Constantine. It was something that was promoted and conquered. And conquered people conquered nations. I mean, forced. Y'all don't know the history of Christianity. But I've got a PowerPoint for that, too. We're going to talk about that in the future. So, I, I mean, I, could, I there's all kind of historical proof that I could give y'all. Um, let's, 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 let's dig in some more. I'm not going to overanalyze this slide at all. I'm simply going to read it. Until you read it as an Israelite, it meaning the Bible, you are still a slave. Amos 3.2 says, and further proves our identity. 
You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Okay, so I think we have established what our ID is. And as we kind of come to an end, I think it's important to do a little recap and then answer a very important question that we haven't answered yet. We have used, uh, we have come with DNA proof, with historical proof, with biblical proof to establish that we are the true Israelites. And um, so the question is, if we are the true Jews, then who are the people over there in our land? Well, the Bible answers that. And remember, the Bible is so full of prophecy because it's speaking to a particular people. And Christ revealed to John, the beloved disciple, that there would be a people in the end times that would say they are Jews. And it's written in Revelation. Let's get it. Let's take a look at it. All right. Revelation 2 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. When he says, I know thy works, that means he knows what we've been doing. He knows our labors. He knows what we've sacrificed. And he, he knows our obedience. He's speaking to a people that he is uh, count, that he is uh, intending to make the kingdom. And he says, in thy tribulation. See, when we think of tribulation, we think about the great tribulation. But he's talking about all of our tribulations through all of our captivities. All of the labor, all of the things that we had to endure, all the atrocities, the Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah 30 that we had, you know, that, that we're in now that we had to go through. And he says, I know thy poverty. We are an impoverished people. And, but it says, but thou art rich. Rich in what? Rich in the promises of, you know, we have Abraham's promises. And if you remember the scripture that says, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. That is what how we're rich. We we got riches that are laid up for us that we're go, that we're going to inherit, especially in the, and particularly in the kingdom to come. He says, and I know the blasphemy. Blasphemy means lies. I know the lies of them that say they are Jews. See, Christ was letting us know. The Most High was letting us know that in the end times there were going to be a people that call themselves Jews. What does it say after that? And are not. But are of the synagogue of Satan. That means the household of Satan. Revelation 3, 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Ah, oh, I'm telling you, when I read that scripture, I can't even believe it has never been amplified or, or you know, mentioned in church. In church all my life, I've never heard this scripture or seen this scripture before. But he says, and to know that I have loved thee. They're going to come and worship at our feet, people. Do you hear me? For all the atrocities that we've gone through, the Most High is a just God. He's going. He's going to make those people, the the, you know, those that run the world, the, the spiritual, the, the spiritual wickedness of the world. They are going to worship at thy feet. Don't tell me identity doesn't matter, because if they're going to worship at thy feet, you got to know who the thy is. The thy is us. Because remember, Christ said, I was sent not but for the lost sheep, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We are the lost sheep. And we are the feet at, uh, at which they will be worshiping. And why? And to, so that they will know that I have loved thee. Remember, 
we it's like God doesn't love us. Look at the condition that we're in. Look at what we're going through. Look what we have gone through for all of these thousands of years, y'all. And it's all a result of all because we didn't hearken into the voice of the Lord our God. Are we putting the dot but we connecting the dots? Are we putting the pieces together? So this is undeniable, y'all. This is the perfect way to finish this video because you all need to know that if we are the true Jews, which we are, then the people over there in our land are not. We're going to get more into it when we talk about Esau and Jacob in a future video, one that's coming soon. But, you know, that's why they call themselves ish, Jew-ish, because, you know, like if you say I'm childish, it doesn't mean that you're a child. It means that you act like a child or you are childlike. So they are Jew-like. They are Jew-ish. They, are, they have no bloodline to Israel whatsoever. They are converts. Here are some additional differences you might find interesting. We are the Jews. Jew is short for Judah. They are Jew-ish. We are Zion. They are Zionist. We have the biblical seven-branch menorah. They have the nine-branch menorah. We wear the Mitri. They wear yarmulke. See, Satan is the consummate imitator, the consummate counterfeiter. He has no creative power, so all he can do is try his best to copy. He wants so bad to be God, but the best he can do is imitate And he doesn't do a good job at that. Why do you think they made such a big fuss when Kyrie posted that that link to that movie or to that documentary, Hebrews to Negroes? We weren't supposed to find out who we were, y'all. That was what the conspiracy of nations in, in Psalm 83 was all about. Look at how they tried to butt break Kyrie right there in front of the world. Just not for saying anything or even saying that he agreed with everything about the movie. He just simply posted a link. And you see what they did to Nick Cannon. I mean, they didn't, they didn't brought him down to his knees. Get him. I'm not going to talk about that, but he, it's not just him, but anybody who, uh, in recent times have professed that we are the true Israelites. I'm telling him this awakening is real, y'all. But, this is part of Satan's plan. This was part of Satan's plan to not just conspire against us to, to make the name of Israel no more, but also to go as far as to make a whole nother people, make the world believe that a whole nother people are us. Isn't that genius? I mean, you got to give it to Satan. <laughs> but the Most High knew he was going to do that. So this right here is just two verses that explain who they are. And I think they're mighty powerful. So I'm hoping that you'll be intrigued enough to come back and uh, as we explore uh, Esau and Jacob, because it's important to know not just who we are, but who they are. Oh, praises to the Most High. As we close out this teaching, it's important that you understand that the Bible is mostly filled with prophecy. And the overall narrative is about God and a particular people. It has been, this book has been hijacked by the Catholic Church and made to be considered a universal book, like it was written to all people. Or it was for all people, but it was not. Just like all religious books, every month, every religion has their own book. And the Israelites have their book. We're not a religion. We are a people. The man made religion. God made people. And he gave a particular people his laws. And I'm saying all that to say this. There are things in the Bible in both Old and New Testament that prove that there would be a people who would 
be asleep, a people who would be blind, a people who would be lost, a people who would forget who they were, a people who would be conspired against to take their uh, the, the memory of them away. And that is what this next slide is about. I want to read them individually because I think it's important to do so. Romans 13, 11 says, Now is high time to awake out of sleep. Now this is Paul writing to the Romans. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Romans eleven twenty five 25 says, that blindness, in part, has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentile be come in. Blindness, in part, that means they would not be able to see. They would not be able to understand. Remember in the beginning, we talked about that ox. We talked about that donkey. That's, that, is, uh, that is proof right there. This is New Testament. Now, Zechariah. 10, 8 through 9. That's the reference, and this is the part of the scripture that I want to bring out. I will sow them among the people. God has sown us among all people. And they shall remember in far countries, and they shall live with their children and turn again. Okay? Zechariah 12, 7 says, The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Now, we are, most of Judah is here in America. And the Most High said he would save us first. I mean, he would wake us up first. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. And that's so that all the other tribes who may not be quite as lost and messed up as we are, they won't magnify themselves against us. We were the kings and the leaders when it came to the 12 tribes and the most and of course we are the tribe through which Christ came so he said he would wake up or he would save the tents of Judah first that is prophetic remember the Bible is mostly prophecy now the Lord had poured Isaiah 20 10 says the Lord had poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep so the most high said he is going to pour out the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. So the prophets, the ministers, uh, the pastors, all these people, he has covered their eyes. And all of this is because of the curse. We had to go through the curse. And in the fullness of time, he says, we would wake up. Psalms 83, 4. This is, if you don't know, Psalms 83 is the chapter that we call the conspiracy of nations. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And these are just a few scriptures. That means that the, there are the, the nations listed in that chapter and also in the book of Obadiah. Obadiah only has one chapter, so you should read it and find out what happens to our enemies. But our enemies conspired against us. Why? So that they could cut off, cut us off from being what? A nation. Remember what we talked the nation was? A nation consists of what? Land, tongues, and families. That the name of Israel, Israel may be no more in remembrance. See, these are scriptures that let us know that Israel will eventually be a people that would be sleep, that would be blind, that would be lost, that would forget who they, who they were. And I don't know what more proof you need, but there are there are other scriptures that we, that I could use. But this is the one that I wanted to I, I wanted to bring these forward to further prove biblically that we would be the people that would at some point know not know who we were, not know our identity, but in the end times that would be the time that the Most High would wake us up, that the Most High would make us come to know our true identity. Sorry. Okay, forgive the costume change. I'm sorry. I'm just coming in from Sarah. I didn't get a chance to change back to my, my previous t-shirt. 
but I did want to insert this video because and it's important for us to know as we get ready to kind of bring this this lesson to an end why we are special and I want I want to start out by using my very f favorite verse um, of all time <laughs> so this is this is uh, something that you need to keep in mind Deuteronomy 7 6 for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth mm. oh I tell you it makes me fool I'm telling you we are a special people unto the Lord the Bible says he severed us from other people we are a special people unto himself just like when you take a wife or a husband you've taken them unto yourself that means that all the other people cannot be your spouse you're selecting one you're selecting one to be above all other people so if you are a, a, a man and you're selecting a wife you're selecting her to be above all other women so God those of you who just are into this we are the world God loves everybody and that kind of thing yeah he loves everybody in in the sense of he doesn't want anybody to perish but he does have a special people and let me tell you what makes us special I'm gonna have to read this I'm gonna have to read one of my second most favorite uh, verses that this I put this one on folk all the time Psalms 147 19 and 20 he shows his word unto Jacob his statutes and his judgments unto Israel so this right here verse 19 says that he has given us he has shown Jacob that's our patriarch he has shown Jacob his word that means he has shown us only us and his statutes it's all of those particular laws and 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 the, you know the ceremonial laws the um the moral law the dietary laws all of those laws he showed to Israel and his judgments we are the ones that are experiencing God's judgments right now y'all why because he showed his word unto Jacob Jacob is our is our forefather and he gave Israel the statutes and judgments so that is why we are seeing the judgment of God on us we are seeing the curses of God on us because we were the only people given it as it says states in the next verse he has not dealt so with any nation that means all the other nations are the ones that have not been selected they were not chosen and as for his judgments they have not known them you don't see all the other nations experiencing what we're experiencing we're at the bottom we are the ones that are, are that where you see the debauchery and the sin and the desolation and and just a destroyed people uh, destroyed lost people because remember Christ said and when the Bible says that he came to seek and save the lost he didn't say seek and save the sinner that wasn't Christ's purpose for coming he said it himself I was sent not except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel so that didn't change Paul coming along didn't change that what he wrote to the, to the, the letters that he wrote after Christ had uh, ascended back to the heaven he did, it didn't it's not going to refute what what Christ said just like what Christ said was not going to refute what the what the prophets of old said because when he taught he taught the law he taught the Old Testament law the Mosaic law that was all he, that was available to him he grew up under the law so he's not going to come against what the, the Most High had established on Mount Sinai with Moses he gonna have him come all the way up there and write the thing with his very finger the laws and then come down and then thousands of years later completely abolish it completely toss it out that is not the, then you're implying that the Most High made a mistake all of you who say well you can't keep six yeah it was plenty of people that kept the law all 600 but see remember all 600 laws don't apply to everybody there are some laws that are specifically to women some laws that are specifically to men some laws that were specifically to the Levites so and then the, 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 the law the, the, the Bible says that his law is perfect it converts the soul and it's the only book that can convert the soul 
So don't tell me that the law is done away with. You just got to understand what part was done away with. And that is the sacrificial law, the law of sacrifice. Christ became the sacrificial part of the law so that we have time to repent. Remember, he said when he sent the disciples out, he said, go teach repentance. Because they didn't have the same opportunity to do that in the Old Testament. That is what the grace period is all about, people. And those people who have taught us this uh, law has done away with doctrine, they are Gentiles. And they are not qualified because they were not given the law. So it's, it's, it's backward. The Gentiles are teaching us the Bible. We're supposed to be the light to the Gentiles. We're supposed to be teaching them like we did in the early church. We taught them. It wasn't until all of the apostles and you know a lot of people who were martyred and killed and or just died out when Constantine came on the scene that he came and he tried to, and he added uh, he added all this paganism, which is what we do today. That is the only reason why we worship on Sundays, y'all. So if you're telling a people, if you really care about the people, and you're telling them that the law is done away with, you are a devil. You are a devil because there is no such thing as a kingdom without laws. We live in this country. You can't live in this country without laws. And so is it in the kingdom of the Most High. That's the, that, it's the same law we're going to be living, uh, living under when the kingdom to come. In, in the kingdom to come. Please hear what I'm saying. And that, is understand, that explains all of the generational curses that we have been, been going through. Each generation, because you, you heard it when we hashed it out. Uh, right there, in verse 15, Deuteronomy 28, 15. And then all the curses it talk about. It's going to be a perpetual curse. It's going to go through all of the generations to come. It's not, we're just talking, it wasn't just going to affect those people that Moses was talking to and that he sprinkled the blood on. And he warned that it was going to be way worse. Way worse. Every generation, it looks, it, the, the curses look worse and worse and worse. And now we're at this point of the fulfillment of time. And we are the generation of the, uh, 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 the there's only going to be a remnant of us to help wake up Jacob again. So that the Most High can get another remnant from us. Because just like those people fell through the earth, those who were complaining and whining and wanting a golden calf and all that kind of stuff, Moses drew a line in the sand and said, those of you are on the Lord's side. And the, the earth just opened up and swallowed them. They went straight to hell. Because think about it. They just saw the Most High split this, split this sea for them. Okay? He just split the sea for them. That's how you know. I'm telling you. We, I mean, we just can't be impressed long at all, can we? That's how you know it's us. Because we are stiff-necked today. We are stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked wicked people. And we always want other gods. We always want something that uh, uh, that doesn't construct con restrain us. But the, but the the law frees us. It, it frees us because we have you read the blessings again? You need to read the blessings because that's the, that's that's that is what we're going to enjoy in the kingdom to come. But only those people that are willing to keep God's law. That is the solution to our problem, people. We've got to stop listening to these Jesuit liars, these devils, these doctrines of devils by people who are false prophets like your Kenneth Copeland and your uh, Jesse Duplantis and, 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 and uh, your um, Billy Grahams and, and uh, you know, I, and Kenneth Hagins. And I can go on and on and on. They are Gentiles teaching Israel? No, baby, no. That is not the way, that is not the proper order of things. It's upside down. And that is why Christianity, it, look, look at the fruits. You see, uh, do, have you heard the history of Christianity? All the killing, all the pillaging, all those things that happened under the, uh, the so-called post-Constantine Christianity. Hundreds of millions of people have been killed due to, because of that. And because of the doing away of the law, including the transatlantic slave trade. That was under Christians, y'all. That was under Christianity and the Catholic Church. 
they were the ones who gave the edict to capture, subdue, and enslave God's people. They knew who we were. They know who we are today. And the way we keep them in power is through our lawlessness. Do you hear what I'm saying? So now we understand why we are the chosen. What makes us so special? The law. He says that we are a holy people. What makes us holy? The law. That's what makes that's what makes that's what makes us special. Because we're gonna deal with this earth the way it's supposed to be done. The way God would do it. If he left the third heaven and came down, but we're gonna have we're gonna reign with Christ. Christ's gonna be in the earth with us, reigning for a thousand years. And we're gonna be dealing with people in righteousness with the law. We won't we won't have but those of us that the remnant that makes it. We ain't got to go and look in the scripture for it. We ain't got to go open a book or have it written on our walls. Because it's already going to be in our hearts and in our minds. But we got to take this opportunity to practice it now. That's what the grace period is for. It is not, it is not a credit card to sin. And anybody who teaches you that is a devil. That is what the scriptures say. And we got to call a devil, a devil. And that's I'm, I'm hoping I'm clear about that. That's the only solution, people. Let me read one more scripture for you that I think is just the clincher. And those of you who don't believe in the Parakava, well, poo on you. <laughs> because if you, once I read this, you're going to understand why they didn't want you to, to uh, embrace the, the Apocrypha. This is the fourth chapter of Baruch. Chapter, starting with verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God. See? Right out, the, right out the gate. They let you know that's Bible. And the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. But such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of, thy, of the light thereof. The light of what? The law. The commandments. That thou mayest be illuminated. Oh, the illumination of God's word comes through the walking in the presence of the light thereof. You can't get revelation knowledge if you are not walking in the laws and commandments of God. You can't. There's another scripture that says, A good understanding have they that do his commandments. That do his commandments. See? Precept upon precept. The, the, the word is always going to confirm itself. Then it says, Give not thine honor to another. Don't give your honor to somebody else. Nor the things that are profitable unto thee. To a strange nation. All these things that are profitable to us. We just give it up for some trinkets, for a few feel-good moment, for a little nip and all that kind of stuff. We give up all of our talents and gifts to a nation, a strange nation. It's our honor. Now, our honor as the regal people of God, we give that up. Oh my God, that's, ooh, that was, that was good. <laughs> And then verse 4. Oh Israel, happy are we. For things are pleasing to God are made known unto us. <laughs> Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. We are being we are we are coming to know who we are. We're remembering who we are. And the nations know who we are already. They remember how things were when we were his people and he was our God. Six, you were sold to the nations. Now, name another nation that another people that was sold to the nations. And it didn't say one nation, it says to the nations. That we have been under multiple captivities. No other people group can say that. No, not like nope. 
cannot look through world history, you will not find it. it. Says you were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved God to wrath. So it wasn't just you were sold to other nations just to, you know just to be destroyed. It's because you, we, we broke the Most High's heart. He says we're his firstborn. There's a scripture that says we are his firstborn. You were delivered unto your enemies. That is why we were delivered to our enemies. Mm -hmm. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to God. We, we, I mean, idolatry was, that's the, that's the main thing that got us in trouble because that's the first thing we got into first. We wanted what other people got and we coveted other people, other nations' gods. See, they are, they have, they are polytheistic. They have multiple gods. And what is the creed of Israel? But I say at the end of all my videos, Hear, O Israel, for the Lord my God is one. We only had one God and he happens to be the only God. All the other gods are false. All the other gods are fake. All the other gods are fallen angels. All the other gods are evil spirits. We all, we're the only people that have the one and true only God. Huh. And we sacrifice to them with our energy for Christmas and energy that we give for Thanksgiving and the energy that we give for Easter and for New Year's and for Valentine's Day. All these uh, days that we call holidays when we have our own high holy days. Do you know how... This, that's why idolatry is spiritual adultery because we we are basically saying we're ignoring you, God. Yeah, we know you, we agree that and that we would obey and that we were going to be your special people, but we're going to go and worship other gods. We're going to go and do what the heathen does, what the Gentiles do, what those that have multiple gods. I like to use the analysis. It's like having a baby. And then the baby, you know, that you bring home from the hospital and is sucking and nursing on your breast. And then he, he jumps up out of your laps, your lap and goes to the neighbor next door and starts sucking on that woman's breast. Is that graphic enough? <laughs> so, so it says, you have forgotten the everlasting God that brought you up. You want to be able to come up? We got to return to God's law because God is the one who brought us up. And you have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. Jerusalem nursed us. Those were the good old days. <sighs> Boy, I tell you, we go on and on and on. The, the everlasting God brought this upon us. Like why? For no other reason than the fact that we <sighs> did not hearken unto the voice of the Lord our God. So that's it in a nutshell, people. The reason why we are special people and the reason why we're going through is because we broke God's law and there's only one solution. After once we wake up and find out who we are, we have to return to God's laws. One more scripture passage as we get ready to conclude. I just want to... I guess book in this with the scripture that was about the ox and the and the donkey. I want to I guess book in this video with this scripture that I think is this it's one of my favorite scriptures and uh, another case a uh, case in point as to why we should uh, embrace the apocrypha, which I don't even like to use the word apocrypha because it's kind of a seminary term when it just simply means hidden books. But this particular uh, passage in Baruch, the, um, the second chapter, I want you to hear me. I'm not gonna. Oh, I'm not gonna over-explain it prior to. I'm just going to read through it and just kind of let it speak for itself and have a little commentary on it if possible. Baruch two thirty, starting. Well, let's start with verse twenty nine. If ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations, where I will scatter them. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, 
they shall remember themselves and shall know that I am the Lord their God. For I will give them a heart and ears to hear and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land, which I promised with an oath unto their, fa unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God. And they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. That's Baruch 2, 29 through 35. Look it up. Read it. I think it kind of speaks for itself, but as you see, I have highlighted, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. I'm telling you, y'all, this awakening is prophetic. The Most High has not forsaken us. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, even though it looked like we have been forsook. He promised that in the land of our captivity, we would come to ourselves like the prodigal son, like those dry bones would um, would gain flesh or would you know would become fleshed out again, and raise up, and and life would be breathed into them. This prophetic word of the of the Most High that He has now um, released into this breath into our people. Now, all of us are not going to receive this breath. All of us are not going to receive this truth. Overstand. It is a privilege to be able to receive this truth. Because it says right here in, in verse 31, and shall know that I am the Lord their God. For I will give them an heart and ears to hear. Everybody's not going to receive this truth. I'm not expecting people to give me a lot of likes. I'm not expecting to get a lot of views. I don't know. I, I, not, that's not my point. I'm not trying to blow up or I'm not trying to do any, uh, you know, win some kind of popularity contest. Well, this is not feeding an ego. This is trying to do what the Most High said that we ought to do to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the preserve of Israel. That is the whole purpose of this because the end times are based around our people. And so if you have an inner witness that says that what we're saying here is true, kind of count it a privilege, y'all. Count it a privilege that the Most High found you to be one of those who he could entrust to hear this truth and to receive this truth. Because I'm telling you, it is, it is a, one, another way he's sifting and another way he's separating wheat from tear. Those who are willing to abandon everything. I mean, everything and everybody for this truth. So don't ignore that inner witness. It is, this is not a time to retreat and to Get, go get back, stay in your comfort zone. This is, this is the time to launch out and see where the most high is, is going to take you. I'm telling you, I hadn't been in it long, but the few, the, the little while I have been, I'm telling you, it's been, a, it's been a whole new world. So keep forging ahead. Don't abandon this truth. We got to help each other in this truth and stay strong so we can all endure the end and inherit the kingdom prepared for us. So I just want to book in the other scripture about the ox and the ass with this one because the ox the ox knows his master, the, the ass doesn't, I mean, he knows his crib, but Israel does not know. But this was said, this scripture says that we will come to know. We will remember ourselves. Proof, y'all. Biblical proof. Even though this, this particular, uh, this, this particular part of the video, this last part of the video is dealing with science and it's dealing with history. 
that you have to end with the Bible because the Bible says that after all we've gone through and all of the various captivities, we've had so many captivities, y'all, that world history has uh, make you think that it was other, another people group. It, that's not the case. All of the captivities, we were the ones enslaved. And now the Most High is waking us up and calling us back. Just like he promised you. Because there is another kingdom coming. We're not going to heaven. We're not, the Most High is in the third heaven. Heaven is coming down to the earth. A new heaven, a new earth. What it says that in Revelation? It's coming down to earth and our king is going to rule in this earth over all other kingdoms, over all other nations. And his people with whom he has a covenant, with whom he came to save, are going to rule with him. The Bible says that Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of the it that follows. So there will be another world. There will be another kingdom. And we will be the one that rule the kingdom to come with our king. In righteousness and the laws of God will be our constitution. That's all. That's all I just wanted to share. The group 230 with you. All right. As promised. You know who you are now. You lost your card, but you found it in Deuteronomy 28. You know who you are now. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to you. <laughs> it's good to find out who you are, isn't it? And um, as, I, as I promised, not only would you find out who you are in this video, but we're going to talk solution because there really isn't but one and kind of obvious solution, and that is we just do the opposite of what we did to get uh, our whipping from the Most High. <laughs> I mean, he whipped us good. He definitely kept his end on the bargain. And so all we have to do is do what he told us to do. We have to what we're going to have to do from here in is what, what uh, Isaiah 49, 6 says, which is to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the preserved of Israel. That is, has to be our mission because until Israel is saved, there is no salvation because we are going to be the ones that will be ruling with Christ in the kingdom to come. I'm sorry if that sounds unfair, but God is God. Take it up with him. But again, when the, people, when the righteous rule, everybody rejoices. So that is, um, he, never in, he never changed his intention and his purpose for his people. He never did. And so that's that's kind of what our first order of business is. You got to, you know, find the tribes, help the most high, gather them together. And then, but in the meantime, those of us who are, are awakened to this marvelous truth, there is a solution. And I made a little quick seven point list. And y'all made some of y'all Israelites out there might disagree, but it is a good list. So you want to know what the solution is? For black people, you know, for us to be able to be on the come up and get ready to rule in the kingdom to come, this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. Number one, repent. That, what did Christ say? He says, tell them when you go out and, and tell people, you know, this gospel, you have to tell them that to repent or the kingdom of heaven is, is at hand. Now, remember, I said the kingdom of heaven. That doesn't mean we're going to heaven. It just means that the kingdom is coming down. Heaven is coming to earth. We're going to be uh, running things like they run in heaven. But think about it that way. Number two, return to God's laws, statutes, and commandments. We know we have to return to them because that's what we broke. So we have to do whatever it is that we did wrong and do it right. So we can get back in the good graces, get back on cold with the most high. Three, walk in the spirit. Don't be moved by your flesh. Don't be don't don't act out of your flesh because you might mess you might mess around and, and tear some up. <laughs> you might get yourself in trouble. You might get somebody else that you love in trouble. A whole lot of things can happen. And then you also need the spirit for discernment because there are, there is so many lies out there. You got to be able to decipher and be able to be able to move uh, on demand when the spirit says 
move, you need to be able to move. And you need to be able to to just uh, navigate through these very difficult end times, these prophetic times. Number four, wake God's people up. That was what I just said. That was the scripture reference uh, in, in Isaiah 49, that, it is, that we have got to um, we've got to raise up the the tribes of Jacob and we got to restore the preserve of Israel. Mm. And share this true gospel. The true gospel is that that the kingdom is 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 at hand, and that we are going to rule with Christ. Isn't that good news to a people that's on the bottom? Isn't that good news? That's what you call the gospel. And for the Gentile, you get to cleave to us because you're gonna to have to turn away from your wicked ways too. You have to you're gonna to have to repent, do all these same things on this list, except for you won't be returning to God's law. You will be turning. To God's law because the law was never given to you. That's why we were the ones that got the whipping. Y'all, y'all, y'all messed up too, real bad. Y'all wicked, wicked, wicked folk too. But we were the ones given the law, and so to whom much is given. And then gather yourselves. The Bible says, "Gather yourselves together, ye nation undesired." We got to come together, and we uh, we could use our so-called synagogues or our places of worship to do this, to plan, to strategize, to come together and meet the needs of our people because we got to stop counting on Esau. That is what got, that's one of the things that got Israel in trouble at the get get, I mean, at the get go. And that is that they wanted a king. They want it a king. And God said, what, ain't I enough? <laughs> so he said, Samuel, just tell him, okay, I'll give him a king. All right. They had Saul. <laughs> but anyway, so we have to gather ourselves together. You say black people never come together. It's time to come together. But we got to come together in righteousness with one ideology or one law under one righteousness, which is the law, statutes, and commandments. See, that's why you know that, that, that being an Israelite is not a religion. It is an ethnicity. And it's an, an, it's an, it's an ethnicity that was chosen by the Most High special people unto himself. He even called us a holy people. As unholy as we're looking and acting right now, he calls us holy. That's how he sees us. He doesn't see us as African-American or by any other name. It is far more important to be what God called you than to be what, uh, to be affiliated with a wicked religion or to be affiliated or, or to call yourself what other people call you. Ain't you tired of being called what other folk call you? Moving on, prepare for these last days. Oh, mm, this is very important. We need to be getting our storehouses in place and we need to be getting our, you know, whatever little skill sets we need to do to be able to survive during very difficult times, possibly a famine, possibly war, because we know civil war is coming. We know World War Three is coming. All of that is prophesied in the Bible. So there are some things in the natural we need to do and whatever we fail to be able to do the most high will make the difference but even even christ himself said go get a sword once so we know there's nothing wrong with being prepared doing those natural things <laughs> so you know like growing your own food it's wonderful things like that that we need to learn how to do with because we are we are the original farmers you know we know how to grow remember uh i, I remember jacob he hung around the house with well, Esau went hunting. So, number seven, keep the faith of Christ. We know that's in that's in Revelation. Revelation. We keep the faith of Christ and endure to the end, because the Bible says this is how you know salvation is not with a prayer. He said, Christ says, uh, He said, He that endures to the end, the same that means He, whoever He is, whosoever endures to the end, the same shall be saved. That's my list, y'all. That's our that's our solution. We can we can work this list. Oh, we'll be in good shape. And I know everybody's not gonna get on board because the Bible even prophesies of this so unfortunately. But it is what it is. And I am I am determined to be a part of that number. Oh, yes, I, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make this kingdom. And I 
I'm putting my brick in and we are putting our brick in, like I said, because we want to get as many people that we know and that we love uh, in the kingdom. And um, so I hope that you, uh, uh, this is a good time now to uh, I hope that we have filled in the card, uh, your ID card. You know exactly who you are now. And as we get ready to part, we're going to just fill in those blanks. And uh, I thank you for joining me. I, I appreciate your patience and your long suffering <laughs> because I know this video has been, you know, even the two part has been long. But this is just such a sensitive and it's, a, it's an issue close to my heart and I really wanted to get it right. So leave your comments and then let me know um, you're, you know, you can, you can be you can be honest and you can say kind things or great things, nice things. And then you can be critical, too, because uh, at this point. I know that this was a labor of love and I happen to know that everybody's not going to receive this truth. I know that everybody's not going to like what I did and all of those kind of things. My husband already told me, he said, be prepared for some persecution. And I, so this is one way I'm toughening up my little persecution skin. Anyway, I love you, fam. Until next time, I know uh, the next video, will, I promise you, will not be this long, but it's going to be very, very ser serious, very, very, um, it should be good, though, because we're going to need to talk about salvation, what, what it is, what, you know, we might do a John 316, or we may do the law, talk about the law. This will just kind of make it, break it down in a, uh, in, with my brain, you know, because I think that I can do it in a way to make you understand. Anyway, I'm going to go get out of here and thank you again for, for joining me and for staying with me. And until next time, I'm your beautiful girl. And I say, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one and he's prepared and ready to do some marvelous things for us. But first, the truth must be told. Bye. Truth that you know, that is where the truth be told.